This video is an introduction to candlesticks. We'll cover the basics of candlesticks and candlestick patterns. Together we'll dive into the chart and actually identify candlesticks that enables us to predict what's going to happen next on the market. Once we have identified those candlesticks, we'll then go long on the market and simulate on whether or not the trade would have been profitable. And you want to make sure that you stay tuned and make sure that you're watching from class one to class number 20 in order for you to get all the material that we actually prepared for you to become a very successful trader when it comes to trading the futures market. Now, just bear in mind that in this class, we're only going to be covering the basics of candlesticks and the basics of candlestick patterns. Now, the reason why we're only covering the basics and not going in depth is simply because when it comes to candlesticks and candlestick patterns, some information is really like not necessarily for you to know. In fact, the less you know, the most likely you are to succeed on the market. Now, the reason why I say that is simply because there are these, you know, candlestick patterns here that are supposed to be giving you, you know, direction with regards to what's going to happen next on the market. Now, the reality is that most of these things here do not work, but you wouldn't know this because you are just getting started in the world of cryptocurrency or in the world of trading, you know, Forex, stocks, whatever the case may be. And you just want to consume as much information as possible. Now, the reason why why more than 95% of traders lose money is simply because everybody's consuming this information and all this information is completely garbage. But like I said, you wouldn't know because you just want to learn how to trade. So basically, if you just look up on the internet how to start trading, everyone will actually talk about these candlestick patterns and the reality is that they don't work. And when you actually look into this forum or these videos, you'll find, you know, comments that are very fascinating to read and people are saying thank you so much for providing such information for free and i'm thinking to myself that this information is not free because you will be paying down the line with your account as you'll be blowing your accounts you know one account after another because you consume this information and went straight to trading now i'm very privileged because i'm a self-taught trader meaning that i taught myself how to trade and it's only later that i went to actually check out these forums and check out you know these pdfs and i'm thinking to myself it's completely nonsense and i'm happy that actually that's not the way that i learned how to trade because had that been the case i would have blown out my account and i wouldn't be successful in the world of trading now the purpose of this course is to take you from a beginner to a pro in understanding how to trade not to a pro trader Remember, trading comes with times and it comes with experience. And I'm by no means saying that this course is the best thing in the world. Everything here that I present for you is absolutely for free for you to consume. And I really appreciate it if you can smash the like button, if you appreciate the content. Now, let's get started with the basics of candlesticks right now. Now, for those of you who are just getting started, I want to simplify to you what is a candlestick. And to really understand what is a candlestick, let's look at a calendar. Now, a calendar can represent a year, the entire year. And within that year, you have months. And within those months, you have weeks and weekends and holidays. As you can see, in my country, today is the 16th of June. And 16th of June is actually the holiday. So the same can be true here on a trading chart. Over here, you can come and select whether you want to view this on a daily basis or weekly or monthly. So I'm just going to keep it on daily, which means that each and every candle over here represents a day. And from the chart, we can see that we've got red candles and green candles. Now let's jump into the material and actually see what this means in detail. All right. So let's start with the basic. So just remember that when you're trading, you've got, you know, buyers and sellers, and these two candles represent those two scenarios. When a candle is actually green, that means the buyers are in control and the market is actually bullish. And when the candle is actually red, that means that candle is bearish and the sellers are actually in control, which means the sellers are actually pushing the markets down. And this is how it actually happened. As mentioned earlier, each candle here can represent any time of a chart, meaning this candle can represent, you know, a second, five minutes, to an hour to a week in this case let's assume that this candle represents a day so this will be a daily candle this will be the action that happened on a specific given day on the market so the same thing happens when you actually come to the market and actually just come here and click on the daily chart which means that each and every candle here represents a day so each and every candle represents a day but you can see this candle 
some of them are long some of them are very short some of them are very small which means the action happening on that day is actually huge or there is basically nothing the market is moving sideways as you can see here there was a huge action but obviously it ended up closing over here so let's just come back over here so basically here we've got an open this is when the market will open in this case the market opened here and it actually came down if i can just get this over here so in this case the market opened over here and the sellers were in control and they pushed the price lower than that but obviously um the buyers took control again and the market st started going up where we can actually see the body of the candle and it went as high as this point over here but then the sellers took control again which means that we closed around this point here so this is the bullish candle this again represents a day or represents any time frame that you have chosen when it comes to your trading chart here so if you chose a day for example if you chose uh, let's say one hour for example each and every candle over here now represents an hour which means that this candle on this side can also represent an hour now let's come to the bearish candle now the bearish candle really represents that the sellers are in control again um this is where the candle opened it opened over here and maybe the buyers took control and actually pushed the price a little bit higher before the sellers started gain, gaining control again which meant that they pushed the price to come as low as this price over here which means that they pushed the price to come as low as this point over here but then the day or an hour close within this range here so that will be the close of this bearish candle you can see that it's actually quite the opposite here on the bullish candle the opening is on the bottom and here on the bearish candle the opening is on the top so just keep those in mind so let's have a look at you know another example whereby we can actually have a look at this too so i'm just going to come here and let's do a bullish candle so i'm just going to copy this or maybe let's do it this way so let's control z and i'm going to copy this and bring it over here so this will be our bullish example just for the last time here and then i'm going to copy the week as well so while we're on this just remember that the low obviously this is also called the week and this is the opening this is the body and this is the high so this part here will be also called the wick so what i want to talk about here is how does this thing actually happen before we actually go to the real chart and see it in real life so i'm just going to delete this for now and actually bring this very low here so when the market opens or when the candle opens it opens as something like this it's very tiny you won't see it but as soon as the market start getting movement this candle here will start going down now in this case if this was the open and the candle started going down this candle will actually be red because obviously the sellers are in control which means that if it's red the sellers are actually in control and if they do push the price to this price point over here and maybe the buyers in this case will start pushing the price up again so what will happen is that since the price came to touch these levels we now have to bring in the lower or the weak so i'm just going to duplicate this and bring it over here but this will still be red so let's bring it to red and it actually has to come down here so now this is what we have so far and from here let's say the buyers actually push the price even higher now because the price is beyond the opening price this will actually change to be a green candle because now the buyers are in control so let's assume that the buyers actually manage to push the price up to those price range over here or maybe even beyond that now in this case let's say this is as far as the buyers manage to push the market so after that the sellers actually took control again which means the market came even lower but remember the buyers managed to push the price to this price point which means that the week will actually have to show a high 
of that previous high over here so that's how you get a candle like this but obviously let's have a look at this in action so over here i've got a price of bitcoin again i was meant to use a different stock here but i think if we use just a cryptocurrency because cryptocurrencies never sleep in this case for us to really have a look at this in real life in action let's click here and actually click on one minute so each and every candle here now represents a minute let me reset this or maybe let me just hold control and actually zoom in here and maybe make this a little bit bigger so that everyone can see now i think we've got our candle nice and big so you can see that we've got these very small candles this is where you can actually see very many different type of candles because everything is happening within a minute now let's just wait and see and get a new candle over here now you, you'll see here there's a countdown that tells us when exactly a new candle is going to come in so we've got about 15 seconds left and the market is actually moving up um, so let's just wait for that so that we can get obviously a new candle maybe let's move this down a little bit now we've got four seconds three seconds one second and obviously a new candle will now come into the chart as you can see this is now a new candle it comes in as a green candle so let's see how this actually happens and you can see here a countdown on the other side that obviously now we have about 30 seconds and we they haven't got much movement here maybe we have to wait and move on to the next one and you can see this candle is now gonna close in exactly one second from now so this obviously like we mentioned represent a minute of each and every action that is happening here in the price of Bitcoin obviously the same is true irrespective of what asset you're actually trading but I just wanted to show you this in real life with regards to how does it happen now let's actually move back to let's say one hour chart over here and I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and now that we know the basic of candlesticks let's move on and actually look at the patterns that are formed by these candlesticks over here let's move on to the next page now here we've got a piercing line this is obviously a pattern that you can use in order for you to start making informed decisions on the market but as mentioned previously when you're actually trading these alone here can never give you a very good signal in order for you to make that informed decision when you're actually trading but you have to use this together with other tools that can help you become a very successful trader on the market and now let's look at this piercing line with regards to how does it work and how can you identify this obviously here on the chart so if we come here you can see that we've got a bearish long candle over here but after that we've got a very bullish candle but that bullish candle is half of the previous candle so this together forms something called a piercing line now how do we identify something like this on the chart let's move back to the chart and over here i've got a chart of apple stock so what we need to do first is to zoom back and see what we have here and you can see that we are on a downtrend over here and this is obviously on one hour chart over here so and if you come back here you can see that it says a bullish signal occurs on the context of a downtrend as you can see here we do have a downtrend over here so but again like i said we cannot just look at this and say yes this is what we're looking for because obviously this is perfectly what we're looking for this is what we see on the other side so we cannot just go and use this information alone and start trading and if we do that it will actually mean that we most likely will lose money on the market because we're just using one form of actually validating our entry so how do we get multiple ways of actually validating your entry let's reset this chart now like i said we saw that we are on a downtrend so i'm just going to bring on my trend line over here And what we can see here is that the market has come and touched this line here multiple times. You can actually see that it will come from here, try to break out, but obviously fail back down here, try to break out, fail down here, try to break, break out over here, and it actually just keep failing. As you can see here, try to break, but it failed, try to break, and it will most likely fail over here. 
So now that we have this downtrend validated over here, we can see that the likelihood of the market actually breaking higher is extremely high. Remember, when it comes to the piercing line, it actually appears when the market is actually on a downtrend and it actually signals that the market is going to bounce higher. Now that we have this kind of information, we do see that the most likelihood over here is that the price is most likely gonna bounce as it did before here. So we most likely will see a price bouncing back up here and most probably just going up here like so. So that is one form of actually us validating our trade, but that is not enough. So in this case, we actually use two forms of actually validating our trade. Let's go ahead and implement more validations so that we can obviously be very confident with regards to our trade. And to do that, we need to enable, you know, few indicators. And the first indicator that I want to enable is this one here called, you know, the EMA ribbons. Now, this EMA ribbons comes with this yellow line, which is the 200 EMA. We're going to come to that if I double click. You can see that we've got a 200 EMA over here. So what we can see is that this ribbons here indicates a downtrend. So if we're actually trading below the 200, which is the yellow line, and you can see that we are on a downtrend over here. So what we're looking for is to obviously break out. Now we're now starting to get a feel of maybe this being a bottom, but we need to obviously confirm if this is also a bottom over here. So to do that, we need to obviously bring another indicator and that indicator is the VPVR. So I'm going to bring that. You can see it got this, you know, red line over here and this red line is called the point of control. But in this case, we don't want to talk about that because we're going to dive into more details on upcoming episodes when we're actually going to be, you know, talking about indicators and which indicators to use. But what I want to show you here with this indicator is that it actually shows the volume that was traded on a specific, you know, price range. And you can see here that we are sort of like in a bottom. If you bring this here, you can see this is like the lowest the volume is. So this obviously indicates that this will be a bounce from here. The, you know, the market will go up. So that is another form of actually validating our trade. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to bring another indicator uh, for us to actually make sure that we're actually validating, you know, and entering into a correct trade. Now you can see that I've brought in another indicator and this indicator actually tells me that, hey, this is actually the bottom where you can buy. And this indicator will actually show you that this is actually the bottom. But you can see here, we're expecting the indicator to start shooting here at number five, but it hasn't done that. Why? Because the indicator will wait to actually get a confirmation on the next candle. Now, the best way that you can actually do here is to actually move this. Now you can see that we're on a one hour time frame to move it 50% lower than that, which is going to be 30 minutes. And if we actually move this to a lower time frame, you can see that we are now getting a new candle here. If we move this to another, you know, lower time frame, you can see that we're getting another candle. But now something interesting is happening. You can see we are now getting, you know, this indicator is starting to shoot in, telling us that now we can enter this trade, which means this trade is actually very, very valid. So you can see that now because we moved to a lower time frame, now we can see that now we can actually enter this trade. Now let's move back to one hour time frame because that's what we're using here for this example. I'm going to go ahead and reset this and come back here. So now we know that this trade is actually valid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the trade, right? So I'm going to go long and this is going to be my enterprise right here. So what do we do next? Now that we know that this will most likely be the bottom on the market, even though it's not guaranteed, but what we want is that we need to milk and actually get as much profit as possible from the market. So in this case, I'm just going to move this. Obviously, this is no point of reference. We're just doing it for the sake of this example. I'm actually going to move this to about 12%. So I want to, I'm looking at 12%. Again, when we actually reach 10%, 12%, or maybe let's say 11% or 10% at this stage. So I'm just going to keep it at 10.95. So that is the profit that we're looking for. Why? Because obviously we know that the market will most likely bounce as it has been doing over here. We are expecting the market to do something similar to this. So we are expecting a bounce to maybe to position one over here or maybe somewhere. 
but i know that the market has been failing to breach beyond the yellow line over here so i'm looking to take profit just about on the yellow line so even if i brought this up just about here if i'm going to be greedy i can obviously do that but i don't want to do that but what i want to do here is just to keep it around 10 percent and then what we can do is that once the trade actually reaches that point we're actually not going to take profit but we're going to put a trailing stop loss which is going to guarantee us a profit on this trade so now that we actually got that let's actually see how the market played out All right, so now you can actually see that the price actually did come up here and actually touched our take profit, which means that this trade would have been profitable. Obviously, I was just making this as a point of reference. I'm not saying this is the exact enterprise that you should be using. So you can see that obviously this trade would have been more profitable. But what I want to show you here is that this obviously now this is a little bit messed up. So maybe we should go ahead and clean this. Let's go ahead and delete this. All right, now that we actually clean this up, I want us to take a look at something here. Remember, we actually got this signal to actually go long, but what followed after that was three consecutive green candles. Now, these candles can be referred to as three white soldiers. Again, when you actually look at your trading, you know, note, you know, these things may never really be 100% the same with regards to what will happen in a real world over here if you actually look into this chart here but we can see that these candlesticks are relatively the same and the actual signal that the price is most likely going to go up if we come back here to our note we can see that the three white soldiers consist of three consecutive green candlesticks and then these candlesticks must close at the level that exceeds the previous high as we can see here that is obviously the case now like I said, these candlesticks will never be 100% the same with regards to, you know, something that you learn here on your textbook or on your learning material and something that you actually find within the chart itself. And ideally, these candlesticks shouldn't have a long week. So basically what that means is that these candlesticks shouldn't have this long week over here. Remember, this can be the low, but also this is called the week. So they shouldn't have something like that. So I thought that this is something we should be mentioning since that we're already here. And you can see that if you did take a buy position from here, that trade would have been profitable as the markets just kept going up. So an opposite to three white soldiers will be something called three black crows. Now, this actually is the exact opposite. So which means that if we actually take these candlesticks over here, and actually flip them to red like so and then flip them around so this candle pattern can be seen as you know a reversal on an uptrend so which means if the market was actually going up and you started seeing something like this this will mean that uh, the market is probably retracing from you know the previous high over here but as i explained to you earlier in this video that you know trying to find these candlesticks on the charts will be very very difficult so that's why i said to you guys in the beginning of this video that in most cases these things don't work so my intention here was to actually show you the opposite of the previous pattern that we we're actually talking about so i'm not saying that you'll be able to see something like this on a chart and be able to trade and make profit with you know such things like this like i said these things in most cases don't work but i still have to show you um, so that you know what to expect out there by the way i'll leave link in the description of this video of all these candlestick patterns so that you can obviously go and have a look at them i'm by no means you know saying these things will work when you're actually trading like i told you in most cases these won't work but you know it doesn't really hurt to you know learn what is out there so in this video i'm just cherry picking those that i believe are very necessary for you you know to know especially you know the basic or the introduction to candlesticks what we covered here earlier on with regards to the bullish candle and the bearish candle because if you're just getting started i'm of the view that this is the only information you need in order for you you know to understand uh, you know candlesticks so 
let's move on and we actually cover this so basically here i want to talk about the hammer so a hammer for me is a candlestick that i found you know to be very useful so let me go ahead and just duplicate this so we can obviously have a look at this from the beginning so this right here will be you know the open of the candle now let's say this is where the candle actually opened now the sellers actually managed to push the market down and that's created a, the low over there and then the buyers managed to actually push the market up like so so that's what makes a hammer so for me like i said this is one of the candles that i found to be very very you know helpful or rather useful obviously depending on what type of markets do you actually trading if you're trading cryptocurrencies forex or you're trading you know stocks those markets you know behave differently for example cryptocurrencies are very volatile so sometimes it's extremely difficult for you to find a perfect hammer like this so you may find that it's actually never really 100 percent like so like i said earlier on when you're actually learning with textbook information this is what you find but when you actually go to the market you actually find you know different scenarios as you can see over here if i can just get the highlighter as you can see here you can identify you know some of these things that i'm actually talking about so what i found is that in cryptocurrencies this can be extremely volatile which makes the weak or rather the lower very 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 long so if i actually move to the s p 500 over here you can see that i've got a chart over here with also a trend line this is a market that is on a trend line i also like to trade the s p 500 simply because it is one of the easiest markets to trade in my point of view so over here you can see there is a hammer but let's actually look at how everything plays out over here so we're gonna start with s p 500 and maybe come back to cryptocurrencies over here if we start over here and we can actually see that the market is on the uptrend however we did get something called a pullback now this in trading is called a pullback whenever a market you know pulls back like so these are called pullbacks let me just delete those now because of the pullback remember when we talk about a hammer a hammer actually happens on the downfall so when actually the market is going down and uh, that will be the last candle that you most likely see and that candle represents a reversal on the market now that we know that this candle called the hammer over here represents a reversal on the market what we need to do is to obviously maybe bring in some indicator on this chart like i said i like to trade to find extra signals in order for me to enter into a trade so i went ahead and actually brought in my ema ribbons and i actually brought in this indicator that tells me when to enter a trade and when to exit a trade so as you can see here it doesn't really tell me to enter into this trade but you can see here with regards to the ema ribbons that every time the market actually come lower to the ema ribbons and you can see that it never really breaks it in the sense that it will actually breaks and actually close the candle below the ema ribbons you can only find that maybe lower right about here and here so that is a very healthy you know bullish signal which means that this will be you know a valid entry here if we enter this trade but as i showed you before what i like to do is to zoom in into a trade as you can see here i'm on a daily time frame so basically i'm gonna zoom in not on a four hours but on a three hour time frame i'm gonna click on that and then now when i click on the you know three hour time frame you can see that now i get that signal that tells me hey you need to enter into this trade however if i zoom back to a daily time frame that signal will not show up so that's the importance of actually using multiple time frames but later in this course we'll actually discuss which is the best time frames that you should be using as a trader or as a beginner trader so now that we know that this is a valid entry now what we can do is to now enter a long position over here so maybe because now we actually know that in most cases the market will actually come and retest this line here on top so we need to make sure that we don't become greedy and actually make sure that we we set our take profit right about this price range which is in this case it's about four percent now let me bring this a little bit lower now this is not necessarily accurate so what we're looking for here is the market to actually move on the upper direction and actually come and touch the edges of this box here on top so that's actually what we're looking for the market 
to come and touch these levels here so maybe you have seen me use this thing before but you never really understood what it means we're going to be diving into more details with regards to how to set these things up later within the course so what we're looking for is the price to actually come touch this level over here so let's actually see how everything now plays out let me go ahead and reset this maybe zoom in one more time So as you can see this trade would have been a successful trade because the market actually came and closed above our take profit now let's move over from the s p 500 to actually you know ethereum which is the cryptocurrency as you can see here also we have let me just exit that you can see that we do have a hammer here at the bottom remember a hammer can be either a green or a red candle if you check here the previous one that we spotted here on the market or on this chart was actually a green candle now you can see a red one over here now these candles will never really be precise so you know they, they, it's, they can never be you know exactly as you've seen here on these drawings or as you can see here on this example over here like i said i'm going to leave this information so that you can obviously come and have a look at this information yourself so let's just jump into the chart over here and see how this one plays out so here i'm on ethereum and again i'm gonna bring in my indicators and over here we can see that we are trading below the email ribbons which means this market is on a bearish trend as you can see here it's trading very low here so what we want to do is to obviously start to zoom in on a different time frame so i'm going to move again to let's start with four hour time frame and now you can see when we actually move to a four hour time frame you can see that we do get a signal to go long now let's move back to a daily time frame it's always very important to zoom into different time frames in order for you to see um you know different perspective of the market so now that we know that we should be going long over here let's bring our tool to actually enter into a long position so i'm just going to leave that in you know like that and i'm actually going to bring this lower like so because this market is obviously on a downtrend and i know the sentiment of cryptocurrencies right now as of recording this video is that they are most likely will fall even further so what i'm looking for is to take you know a very quick long position here and exit the trade very quickly hey sorry for cutting off this video i just want to reference something i'm busy right now editing this video that you're watching and i just realized something that i actually spoke about at the time of recording this video uh, ethereum was trading around one thousand eight hundred dollars and it has actually dropped now about to to about a thousand dollars and this is what i was talking about exactly at this point of the video when i actually said you need to know the overall sentiment of the market so at the time of recording this video i said that i'm predicting that the market is going to go down even further that's why i'm actually you know putting my take profit just about at that price range that i was just talking about now and the reason why this is very important because this gives you an edge on the market to sort of like know beyond what you see on the chart so as much as you're trading based on the information that you see on the chart but in your mind you should have an overall perspective of what could potentially happen next on the market in fact let me dive into the chart and actually demonstrate what i'm actually talking about so this is the point of the video that i was actually referring to and if you go back to the video you can see that at the time of recording the video the price was actually at 1795 us dollars and right now the price has actually dropped to 1120 dollars in fact it even dropped even lower than that to about a thousand dollars as you can see over here so that's what i meant by knowing the overall sentiment of the market so this is very important as a trader you should know what is happening right now on the market and what could potentially happen next for example i think that the price of cryptocurrencies is going to continue to drop even lower than anything that we've seen recently so if i just bring this tool over here so i'm expecting that the price is going to go sideways right now this is the price range that i'm expecting to see in the next few weeks and months and the overall price of ethereum over here 
I think it's going to come down to about $800, even possibly lower than that. And I see a lot of people right now are saying this is the perfect time to buy. Yes, it's a perfect time to start accumulating, but you should always know the overall perspective of what could potentially happen next on the market. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that up and sort of like cross reference everything that I was talking about here in this part of the video. So let's dive back into the video right now. So what I'm looking for is to take, you know, a very quick, uh, you know, long position here and exit the trade very quickly. So, and in this case, you can see that we're actually trading below the 200 EMA, which means that uh, this market will most likely still go on a lower side. So let's go ahead and see how this one plays out. So as you can see, this was also a very successful trade. But the reason why we actually here went a little bit lower is simply because we were trading very close to the 200 EMA. Remember, this 200 EMA will very often come and act as a resistance. As you can see here, almost twice the market came and actually tried to break above the 200 EMA, but it actually failed. So basically the bulls or the buyers here try to actually come and take the price from here and actually push it above the, EM, the 200 EMA, but they actually fail to do that, which means that the bears are actually in control. As you can see, the market actually dropped about 30% or so. Again, it really depends on which currency or which commodity you're actually trading because cryptocurrencies can be very volatile. Now, cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum are, are less volatile compared to cryptocurrencies such as XRP. But again, later within this video series, we're actually going to be diving into more details with regards to which cryptocurrencies should you be trading. And we'll actually be looking at those factors with regards to the volatility and obviously the less volatile cryptocurrencies as well. Because the more volatile the asset, the higher the risk, but also the higher the reward. So we're going to be diving into that in episodes that are coming up next. Now let's move on to a Doge candlestick. Now this is a candlestick that is considered to be a mutual candlestick, meaning there is no winner or a loser on that specific time frame. Now I'm going to be showing you in real life uh, how this actually happens in a moment. But basically what I want you to know here is that when the market actually start opening over here, let me just bring this to red so that you can see it. So when the market opens here, maybe the sellers actually push the price lower to that specific point before the buyers actually manage to actually push it to that high over there. So that create the low in this case, this will be the lower over here. So let me maybe duplicate this and actually bring it here and then type low. So that will be the high over there. But remember that the market will actually not close on a high when it comes to the Doge candlestick. That will mean that the candlestick or the sellers must actually push the price back down to about there. So it's a mutual candlestick in a sense that yes, there was activity on the market. The market actually went up and down as you can see all this range over here. If I can you know, bring red to that. You can see that there was an activity on the market. However, there was no clear winner or a clear loser in this case. Obviously, this depends on the time frame that you're actually using. When you actually move into a bigger time frames, you may never see candles such as Doge candlesticks. So let me just come here and actually bring this to maybe let's say a weekly time frame and actually reset this, maybe disable all the indicators. And you can see this is the candlestick that we're actually talking about over here. You can see that there was, you know, activity happening this this week over here. And this is the candlestick that we're actually talking about here. I can actually see it on a weekly time frame. Let me just zoom in. And you can see that as much as there was activity within this week over here, let me change that to this. You can see that as much as there was activity here, but there was no clear winner within this period. But in the bigger time frames, you won't necessarily find too many of these candles. So here we can see that there is a little bit of a body. Remember, when it actually comes to a doge, a doge is a candlestick without a body. So basically, it just you know 
the market opens goes to the low goes to the high but basically close exactly where it opened so it will actually close exactly where it actually opened so these are the different type of doge candlesticks that you can find within you know the chart and also depending on which time frame you're using you may not be able to see some of these you know candlestick over here but let's just come to you know weekly time frame here you can see there's one over here there's also one over here but this one does have you know a tiny body but i think it will still count as a doge candlestick so if you actually wanted to see you know a doge in action just move your time frame to at least one minute because within one minute there is less activity happening on the market which means there will less likely be a clear winner or a clear loser as you can see here you're just getting this dash which means the market opened exactly right here but it's actually closed exactly where it opened so you can see that they you know are all these you know blank or dashes on the market which means that there was no clear winner within those period of you know trading so you can only find such information on this lower time frame so basically this is the only information you need if you're just getting started with understanding candlesticks and if you actually come and try to understand all these things all these candlestick patterns here you most likely will get lost because like i said in the beginning of this video most of these candlestick patterns here will not work now the reason why i'm saying that is simply because in most cases these candlestick patterns are giving you the price history uh, in order for you to determine what's going to happen next and it's very rare to find them on the market but like i said most people are preaching this uh that's this is the only thing that you need to know but in my point of view this is completely nonsense you don't have to worry about all these things the only thing important is to learn the basics of candlesticks then combine that with a very powerful tool called chart patterns now we're going to be covering the chart patterns within this course but that's going to be coming up in class number eight as you can see this is where we'll be actually covering chart patterns now join us in the next class where we actually talk about trading view because trading view is the program that i use for me to analyze the market go ahead and click on the class coming up next and i will see you there thank you so much for watching never forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave us a comment on the comment section below go ahead and click on that class i will see you there goodbye for now peace